is a Situation Room on City TV. Hello, you're welcome. My name is Umaru Sandamadu, and I'm doing this with... Sami Uyafe. And we bring you Situation Room every Thursday here on City TV. And of course, we play it back for you, for those who may have missed any of the segments. We are live from number 5, Ola Hansen Lane at Tessano in Accra. And it's a heritage month. It's a month that we've set aside to celebrate everything Ghana. And if you haven't heard this weekend, there's a big, big party coming up organized by CTFM and City TV. It's a food bazaar, food festival That's now. It's upgraded to a festival because every food we want in Ghana is coming there. Sammy, what's your favorite food? Fufu, of course. Hey, that comes, what do you expect? Do you like Fufu? <laughs> fufu, like, fufu like, uh, yeah, my dear. No, I mean... The way you like yeah, my dear. I, I remember when Katie Hemo wanted to ban Yemadi, yeah, you were angry. I was going to do a one-man protest yeah, because against it, a demonstration. I know that. that my house corner. to parliament. Why do you like Fufu, though? Like, Fufu is well, one food that every part of Ghana you have, yeah. except that there are varieties. So in the north, they have Fufu, but it's yam Fufu. And then, I don't know what you have, it's cassava. Well, I mean, it's, it's, so cassava and plantain. In a blend of plantain or cocoa yam. So I grew up in a home where fufu was, was the only meal, sort of. Oh. My dad liked it, my mom, my grandma. So in a home where you eat all this type of food, you grow up with it. And, and, and it, 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 it's, so it's fufu, a favorite. So fufu is what, chicken or It, it could meat? go with anything, but for me, it normally goes with a punchy cracker. Oh, I see. The apapuno, so, the one you wash your hands, three days you still have it. It did it. Yeah, that was all. <laughs> so me, my favorite food is actually banku and okro soup. Okay. I don't know why, but that's my favorite food. Banku and okro soup, okay, with tuna inside. Mm -hmm. And yeah, my dear. Mm -hmm. Chale, or and crab. Chale, no, it's, I don't chew, I don't chew crab, that's a problem. Will it, will it? I, will it soft one, it should be soft one. <laughs> Necessary, Chale, is if, if you give me that thing, set a trap, any trap for me, I'll fall inside. It'll get you a... But if it comes to fufu, I like my fufu with salmon, fresh salmon okay, yeah, and yeah. live soup. But sometimes when I'm in the mood, I want palm nut soup. It makes... A bang Yeah, a bang quine. But I, I've just been reminded. I'm, I'm fasting. Yeah, so, fasting. Mm, fasting. But this evening, that's what I used to break for. <laughs> so if you want to have a decent meal, that will make you feel like you're eating from mm. the port of your grandmother. The City uh, FM and City TV organized back to your village food festival at the Accra Metropolitan Assembly Forecourt in Accra. It's a place you should be. It's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Uh, depends on when the food finishes and when the patrons leave at the AMA forecourt. It's happening on Saturday and, and it's happening Sunday. on Sunday. I'm fasting, but I'll come there to break my fast. So, inshallah, on... Um, so, on Sa Sunday, those who go to church, right after church... Then you carry the family. Day. Just come there. Don't go home. Yeah. Come and have your lunch there. Yeah, yeah. Carry the family. Everything will be served. And Saturday to down there, freedom. Come and, come and enjoy. enjoy. Taste every food. Mm -hmm. Go to all the villages. We have the north, the south, the central, the east. Go to all the villages. Taste the food. Drink their drink. I went on the heritage caravan. And I think this is the first time we're doing this since we came back, right? Yeah. I went on the heritage caravan. I've eaten food from every part of this country, 14 regions. I have drunk their, their local drinks. I've taken their cuisines. And man, is it nice. When we went to the up north, it was awesome. And we went to the Volta region, Toto Pakpa, every Vintola, it's nice. So if you haven't gone on Heritage Caravan, you still want to taste Ghana, this weekend is where you should come to. Sami Aloje Nakai. No, no, only. That's all. But let's talk about situation. The, over here, we talk about politics, running affairs, current affairs issues. When we come back, we'll highlight the key issues we're looking at for you on the situation room. Please stay with us. <music> Welcome back. This is still the situation room on City TV. Wow, well, there have been a lot of issues happening within the Ghana politics, the MPP specifically. In the lead up to the party's parliament and presidential primaries, which Dr. Mama de Bormia won, there have been issues about unity, which is very important in every politics or every the, the, political the, party. Of every, every political party, for want of a better way. Now, the MPP wants to break the eight. And unity is a very, very important thing for them if they want to. The NDC, one way or the other, has its machinery set up. They have their running mate, their presidential candidate, parliamentary candidate, they are full ready just for December 7th. The MPP, on the other hand, has some few issues to pick as far as unity and running mate is concerned. Just last week, we had issues in the Ashanti region, the World Bank of the MPP, the backbone of the MPP, where we had some regional executives writing a petition to the leadership of the party addressed the general secretary, raising issues about the regional chairman, the governor of the Ashanti region when it comes to the MPP, Chairman Wun me. They say that he's running a one-man show in the region. And if that is not checked, it may affect the chances of the party in the region. And it may affect the party to the extent that the party may not be able to break the eight because the Ashanti region 
is one of the big players for the MPP. In 2008, there, is, uh, there was a research carried out after the election, which says that over 500,000 MPP supporters did not vote in the Ashanti region alone. That's 2008. The party is hoping not to have a repetition of what happened in 2008. And so they want the party leadership to call Chemawun to me to order. One, they say he's running a one-man show. Secondly, he doesn't call meetings. He doesn't think about the welfare of party people. When issues come, and all the executives are supposed to trade ideas, Jojo, and resolve those issues, who to me doesn't do that. He takes decisions by himself. And most of the time, these decisions backfires, and it comes to affect the party. So they want the leadership to immediately address it. Are these regional executives making this statement or constituency executives? These are regional executives. His own executives. His own executive. First vice chair, regional organizer, regional secretary, regional treasurer, the entire leadership ah, in the region. He doesn't have any of the executives on his side. supporting him. They are all really against him. Wait, Sami, you know, let's go back. Mm -hmm. When they were going to the contest, yes. he was contested. He was contested. And he won. He won, yeah. Do we know whether these people did not support him at the time? He was an incumbent chair he an and incumbent he retained chair the seat. Of the region. Do we know what happened at the time? Because that would be a very important thing. He had only two executives supporting him at that particular election. So it, which then, he won. then this is not new. This is not new. So it means that they don't like him. It means that he's working with regional executives who don't like Definitely. him. Definitely. It's similar to the NDC in Greater Accra. Mm -hmm. The NDC has a chairman who is not popular with a lot of the executives. Yeah. So they said that they are doing their own thing around and he sort of they issue a statement, he'll come and counter it and all of that. So that's what is happening mm -hmm. there in Ashanti. The same thing is happening so there. So they don't, maybe it's possible that he's, he's trying to, he's the chairman. The back stops with him. Mm -hmm. If the region loses or if the party loses that region, he is to blame. Yeah. If the party wins, he will take yeah. the credit. So maybe that's why he decided that forget everybody and move on. Maybe he has an agenda that but they don't the understand. But the idea is that politics is about numbers. If mm -hmm. you're not able to rally everybody behind to get the numbers for the party, then there is a problem. This even prompted the chief of staff and the campaign team of the MPP, led by Damboche, to immediately run to the Ashanti region to resolve this particular matter. When the party recently inaugurated, you know, the party has started inaugurating the regional campaign team. So they will start with, they started with the national. Now they go to the region and then constituency, and then polling stations. So that's how the party wants to decentralize the campaign. Now, they started with the regions. They've you know, done quite a number of them. Just this weekend, last weekend, they did Ashanti region, and the issue of unity came in there. The chairman of the campaign team, Damboche, spoke extensively about unity. The chief of staff also spoke about unity within the party. The MPP realized that if there's no unity in the Ashanti region, is really going to be a problem for them as far as breaking the eight is concerned. And mind you, the MPP is hoping to elect or select a running mate from the region. <clears throat> now, if you select a running mate from that region and there's no unity, how are you going to get the party folk in that region to back this running mate to help the candidate win the, the, the election for the MPP and break the head? But Bernard Entrebo Siaku is a powerful man, is he not? Very, very. But for now, his power is more or less dwindling. He's really? become very unpopular in the region. If, if you want to test his popularity, the last regional election is anything to go by. He won all right, but then the kind of competition, his main competitor, then who gave him, this is the first time to me has been heavily challenged. But did he struggle to win? He struggled. He really struggled to win. And there are even calls for him not to run again in the event that the party goes for another internal election in the Ashanti region. But he, he's a Baumia person. He's a Baumia so person. So that's good for him. Fufu Baumia yes. person. No two ways about it. He even started campaigning for Baumia yeah. even before Baumia decided to run for the presidential So, so that's good for him. That's that, good for it him means anyway. that It means that he's popular with the party grassroots. Yes. If the executives don't like him, maybe the grassroots, they like him. Well, well, you, you could say it that way, but these are executives you work with. Mm -hmm. Fine, you work with the majority, but then these are the executives you implement the policies and ideas of the party with. If these people do not work well with you, one, there may be issues of sabotage, there may be issues of, you know, discrediting you here and there, and if you are not able to execute your mandate as a regional chair, you will be blamed. Already, he's not in good terms with the regional minister. They are not in so much good terms okay. because they are, they are, they are beef, for want of a better way, started way back. The regional minister was the member of parliament for the Bosochi constituency, who to me was the former constituency chairman for that particular constituency. Now, when the education minister decided to come and contest as a parliamentary candidate from the U.S., who to me was then the constituency chairman, 
He worked with the education minister to get the regional minister now out, out of parliament during the primaries before the 2016 election. So there's bad blood between the two of them already. And it's till now. So Wuntumi and the education minister are very close, very, very good friends because he orchestrated his him becoming a member of parliament mm -hmm. one way or the other. Now he and the regional minister are also not on good terms. So imagine the regional chairman and regional minister not on good terms. And you're expecting more votes from the region, there's danger for the MPP in that region. Interesting. So you said Dan Boche went there. I think we can yeah. we can see what Dan Boche went to say when he went to the Ashanti region. Uh, he's a chairman of the Baumia campaign, campaign team. Yeah. So let's uh, hear what Dan Boche said. Kweku Boche. Uh, the longest chapters in our constitution have been grievance and disciplinary procedures. You understand? It's so elaborate from uh, constituency to national level. Because let's take it. You have a grievance, talk to people to solve it. If you go and sit in a radio station and you say it, what do you achieve by doing that? You understand? Yes. We, our motto, development in freedom. Our forebearers died and suffered eh, so that people could air their views, so that we can have freedom. So we'll be the last people to suppress anybody's view. But it's also important that once you agree to join a group with a constitution, with norms, with the way of doing things, you conform to it. And that helps build the, the group that you want to be part of, more so in a political party. And we are in contest with others. And we have to send a message that we are disciplined and that we are focused. And it's important that we apply all those things in resolving our problems. So that's the Okre member of parliament and chairman of the Baumia campaign team, Dan Kweku yeah. I mean, So it means that the matter was very critical. Very, then. very, very, very critical in the region. And, and they, they all had to rush there and go and do this inauguration of the, the regional um, campaign team and also talk about unity. When you listen to them and you watch the video, what everybody was saying, every speaker after speaker was preaching unity because they realized that if there's no unity in the party in the region, it's going to affect them. So now going into every election, there's always disadvantage for the incumbent party in every election. And so you need, you need to marshal all your forces, everybody, all the numbers to ensure that you get the, the people you want to vote for you. And so if a region such as Ashanti, and remember the NDC is also trying to make a lot of you know, inroads within the Ashanti mm -hmm, region. Mm -hmm. In the election, election of 2000, uh, I think 2016 or 2020, 2016. they declared, you know, operation one million, one million votes. Mm. And you know what one million votes yeah, means, mean. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so if the MPP is not able to put it as well or do things well in the Ashanti region and the NDC begins to make inroads there, there's trouble really for the MPP. And so that's why the party reacted as swiftly as yeah. it. I don't know that I should say party or government. So if, um, if uh, Dambochoe went, um, that's party, right? Mm -hmm. That's also government. Yeah. But then Frima Oselpari, mm -hmm. she's a chairperson yeah. of the government's staff. <laughs> she's the chief of staff. Mm -hmm. She also was there. Uh, before then, let's hear what Chairman Wuntumi himself, uh, Bernard Enchibosi, who that's his real name, uh, he also spoke. Yes, I've noticed a lot of happenings, but I also noticed that it's been resolved. And I think what we need to do is to look forward. Because as people have sat down and jawed jawed, and they now understand each other, there is no problem. A big party like this, sometimes you will have a human face. It's a very normal. In our houses and our companies and our offices, sometimes we have misunderstanding. But it doesn't mean that we are not united. As today, what you have witnessed here has given clear indication that MPP, we are poised to unite and win the 2024 elections. So there you have it, uh, Bernard Nchibosiaku, um, known as Chairman Wuntumi, Regional Chairman of MPP in the Ashanti region. Uh, you also saw Chief of Staff, uh, Fremont Oselopari, both of them speaking there. Earlier you heard uh, Dan Kwekubuchi, both of them reacting to the seeming disunity. So, Zami, it means that it's a big issue. Um, has a party given an indication as to how it's going to deal with this matter and the government itself? Well, the chief of staff um, spoke and they said that they've resolved all the matters, they've resolved all the issues, and then moving forward, they expect unity to prevail. Which Mutimi himself also spoke at this same event and said that the party is united, all the matters have been resolved, the petition against him, the issues they raised in there, is going to help, you know, withdraw, re, 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 more or less resolve all the matters, and everything stopped with him. 
because the accusation is that he's running a one-man show. He's not involving the, the, the leadership in every uh, aspect of the administration of the party in the region. Now he takes decision on his own without consultation. But he said that now, fine, these issues have come up. He's now going to do what the people expect him to do because the party needs unity in the region, unity for the MPP, and they'll be able to um, break the age. And so he's going to, um, more or less, as the regional chairman, help address these issues and they kick in there. And remember, as the regional chairman, he's supposed to be the regional campaign, uh, more or less manager or coordinator in the region for the Ashanti region. And so if you don't get all these people to back you, campaigning is a bit difficult. And campaigning is about people. You can't campaign on your own. When you go into an area to do campaigning, you need the people who live in the area to take you through where you're supposed to go. You, fine, you live in the Ashanti region. Ashanti region is big. You don't know every part of the Ashanti region. And so you need a police station chairman who is somewhere in Kwadaso or somewhere else who can take you to the Zongos and take you to the slum where you can go and campaign for the party there. But then if you are not so close with these people and you don't know these people very much, well, how are you going there to go and do their campaign? And so it's always important that unity always stands tall when a party is hoping to win an election. And, and for the MPP, 2024 is a very crucial election. A very crucial election for the MPP because... They want to do something they've never done before, something the history of Ghana politics has never seen before. And so if they're able to do this, history remember them as the only political party that has won election back to back, back to back, back to back. And you know, the Ghanaian voter is gradually getting to, to know this you know, scenario that after every eight years, you need to change your administration. And so that thing is gradually sinking into the hands of people. If you listen to John Mahama on his campaign here and there, that's what he's been saying. Eight years is okay. Eight years is enough to change them, bring in a new administration, bring in a new government that will help you know, the country development. And the Ghanaian voter is getting this thing into his or her head that after every eight years, a new administration, uh, a new administration should come. So breaking the eight will be a very tall order. It will, it will be, I've always said, I've always told my colleagues in the newsroom that breaking the eight will be a miracle for the MPP because Sandra, as it stands now, the back, the, the, the altar against the MPP. Now, what the MPP needs to do now, and I've been having a conversation with people within the party, what they wish to do now is that the parliamentary candidates are those who are going to win the election for the MPP. Let me break it down for you. In 2016, it was Nane Kufado who won the election for the MPP and for all the parliamentary mm -hmm. candidates. But in 2024, it's the parliamentary candidates who are going to win the election for Dr. Mama de Bormia and the MPP. Explain that. Explain that. Now, Sandra, all the odds are against the MPP and their candidates. A lot of people have said that, you know, economy is not good. People are complaining. Recently, there is doom so. There is, there is doom so and the likes. So, the parliamentary candidates, the local politics is always different from the national politics. I always told you that because I had the opportunity to follow a presidential candidate. And when he was talking about national issues, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. The locals said, no, we don't need this thing. There's a town here that has Brasman. We don't have Brasman, so give, give us a Brasman. So, and, the, and, so the local person who is the MP is or the, the yes. parliamentary candidate yes. should be popular, popular so that the national candidate will rally will or rally ride, ride, ride on their back. In that particular okay. constituency. Okay. And so, if, for instance, we take a constituency and the parliamentary candidate that is popular and is campaigning on bend and butter issues within the constituency, and after every campaign, he tells them that, okay, if you do this for me, if my president or my candidate comes, he will do more for you. He's doing the campaigning locally for himself and the candidates. And that if they are able to do all these things across the country, then the candidates, the parliamentary candidates, will be the individuals who will win for the candidates, uh, I mean the presidential candidates. Sami, so Chairman Wontimi has promised that, yeah, everything is going to be fine. Yeah. But we know him. He has characteristics like Kennedy Japon. And I'm not using this in an offensive yeah. manner, but they are like mavericks. When everybody says this is how we are going, if they feel strongly that no, that's not how it should mm -hmm. be, they would come out and voice their concerns. Are you sure he's not going to come back and keep fighting, perhaps saying that where the executives are leading him is not the way they ought to go and that he will lead the path to a different way? It will be, be up to him and the party and his, his, his people to, to see who, who he is, the sort of person he is. You say this, and then the next day you are acting differently. Then it will describe the sort of individual you are, the sort of politician you are. Cannot be trusted. Cannot be trusted one way or the other. But 
But for the little that has, as the, the accounts you say, Kakra have found a new so in recent times, no? mm -hmm. he, he, will, he will day guard. He will be in, in a position to work towards the unity of the party and work towards the victory of the MPP in, in the 2024 election. I remember, Ashanti Region is to is where the party is hoping to nominate or select its running mate from. And if you don't have a very popular person who will be able to get the region behind him and get uh, the support that you will need, including all the executives in the party there, then there will be a problem. Because, because even though research has proven that running mates do not really win an election in one way or the other, but we saw that in 2016, the Baumia factor one way or the other. We saw that in 2008, the Jomama factor, how Jomama was able to campaign enough for Prof, uh, Ivan Satamil's late May God. It was called the so, Obama. The Obama. So how Baumia was able to dismantle the then Jomama administration, even though he wasn't uh, the man on the ballot. But in 2024, the dynamics are different. Baumia will for the first time be on the ballot. Jomama has been on the ballot before, since 2012, 2016, 2020. And he selected a running mate who was on the same ticket with him in 2020 election. So you will say new individuals. They've been old guys already. Now, Dr. Bomia is going to be on the ballot for the first time as the candidate. and going to select a new um, running mate, someone who is not really known when it comes to mainline politics or mainstream national election. So it's going to be tough for the MPP as far as this campaigning election uh, for the... <coughs> For the election is concerned. So the more reason why people are saying that the odds really do not favor the MPP and Dr. Baumia, it will take an extra, extra hard work, effort, and I always say the miracle of God must, will come in or must come in if the MPP wants to do this. So the Ashanti region is critical because um, even though the candidate deserves or reserves the right to choose a person yeah. from anywhere, he's under no obligation legally mm -hmm. to choose a candidate from anywhere. He can choose someone from Volta yeah. region, running mate. He can choose Upper East, wherever he wants to. But it's most likely he will choose from Ashanti region. Yes. So Ashanti region is critical, Very crucial. right? The issue of running mate has come up in the past from Ashanti region, and it keeps coming mm -hmm. up. Now we are waking up to news that the ideas we had in the past are not the ideas that we Maybe should be changing. expecting. <laughs> in fact, the, we have been told on authority that the vice president, who is also the ND, MPP flag bearer, is going to name his running mate in April, yeah. which is just from next week thereabout. What are the options that have been put out there? Can you walk us through? You, you have been doing some work on that. Well, Umaru, the, the candidate, as you know, is, is a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So obviously he must select a Christian to make the, the ticket balance. A non-Muslim, maybe. A non-Muslim, well. And choose well, a traditionalist. A non-Muslim. Non mm. But as you are aware, the Ghanaian politics has become such a way that if the candidate is from the north, obviously the, the running mate should be from the south, yeah. or vice versa one way or the other. But before the, the beginning of the year, we had names. We saw names you know, going in and out, parading here and there, and the likes. But one name that keeps coming up over and over and over and over again is Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe. But before that, you know, Sandra, the candidate somewhere in, in January or February met the National Council of the Party as to the naming of his running mate. If you look at the MPP Constitution, Article 12b, it talks about the selection of a running mate. Now, but we are satisfied this particular constitutional provi uh, provision, met the National Council and pleaded for more time to do the selection. Now, when the party is in power, you know, the, the candidate does not have a time limit to do the selection. But when the party is in opposition, you must do that 12 months to the election. So the proponents of the party's constitution will say that, well, he still has time because the party's constitution does not give him a limit as to the time limit for him to do the selection of the running mate. But, what, but one name that keeps coming up over and over and over again is Dr. Is, is Dr. Matthew Opoku Pempe, the Minister of Energy currently, he was a former Minister of Education, the very gentleman who implemented President Akufado's famous free SHS uh, policy. Very, very popular figure within the Ashanti region, if you ask me. 55 years old, he's a medical doctor, a surgeon, and as I mentioned, he's currently the Energy Minister. He's been under fire in recent times because of the perceived return of Bimso 
Recently, it's, Sammy is not perceived. It's not perceived. <laughs> it's not perceived. But, but he, has, he has consistently denied that. No, no, don't, don't, so don't, don't, don't mind. Government communicators have. Sammy, Sammy, I went home last night. There was light off. Sammy, you know, do so has Sammy, do so is a tree word. On, on, until a timetable has been drawn by the ECG, yeah. I'm not sure we all classify it as do so because, because, because. The ECG are those who will come and admit to us okay. that there is Doomsaw, and so we are can I coming come in? out with a timetable. Can I come in? You can. Doomsaw is a tree coinage. What does it mean? Udum no waso. That's what's been happening. The light goes off throughout the day or throughout the night and throughout the day. And but throughout the, e the, but night. the ECG has also come out to explain that. So what ECG will do mm -hmm. is to give us a load shedding timetable. Time they have not issued that. Yeah. But doom so that one, we decide whether we have doom so or not. The same way the minister said we should decide. We should to decide our, and, get and, your own and bring our timetable. Time say, yeah, but continue, sorry. He's come under fire in recent time for, um, okay, I'll go with you, for the doom so, <laughs> the return of doom so. <laughs> for the return of doom so. Doom CAC, doom CAC. <laughs> Recently, I think on Saturday or Sunday, he granted an interview to journalists who covered the inauguration of the Ashanti Regional Campaign for the party on this recent doom so. And some of his own trances, many people have described as unfortunate to the, to the extent that he even mentioned that those who are pushing for or saying that Rizzo has returned it's should create their own bring thing. or create their own time. I, I think we should watch that because it's become a very popular video that yeah. is trending all over the place. Let's watch Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, popularly known as Napu. He was the spokesperson of the, of the MPP on health matters. Many people thought he was going to be health minister when Akufado became president. But he gave him the Ministry of Education to implement free SHS, and now he's in charge of power. Let's listen to him on Doomso. That we are going to work on it, and it's not a work that is a single event. It's a process, and we'll continue to work on it for the energy sector to become better. Have you heard of calls for a timetable? Ask those who want it to bring it. They should bring the timetable. If there, if there is, I, have, I haven't seen any timetable. So when my people are calling for it. Say bring a timetable. And what do you mean? The ECG says that there is no timetable coming. Why do you want to bring a timetable? What purpose? Why, why, why would somebody get up and wish evil or bad for the country? No, it's, it's when it is not planned, when it's not planned, you can't tell the person. So they, they say, if, were you in Ghana and your mama? Did you live in this country under your mama? Did you live in this country under your mama? Did you? I'm asking a question. It was equally worse. It, it cannot be equally worse. But look, MPP use it as a tool against. And I'm saying that even if you are talking about that, it was worse under your mama than ever now. So that's Dr. Matthew Fuku Prempe, his Minister for Energy, uh, talking there about the Doomsaw issue, uh, comparing the M MPP government to the Mahama government. Uh, he is one of the persons penciled to be running me to Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia. Let's talk briefly about the key persons who are being named, what Dr. Baumia should look out for, what the party itself should look out for, Sami. So we have to go and then do a quick interview on that. Professor Smart Sapon is a political researcher. He's Director of Research and Innovation at the Kumasi Technical University. Prof, you're welcome to uh, the Situation Room on City TV. Well, Omaru, good afternoon. If you can hear me, thank I, you so much for having me. I can hear you. Thank you so much. Now, generally, the expectation is that the person should be a non-Muslim and the person should be an Akan. The, the person, Dr. Bamiya, is going to choose. Is that something that should be acceptable generally? Is that like a rule that must be obeyed in this choice of a running mate? Prof, can you hear me? Yes, your line went off a bit, but I think... Yes, so I'm I saying that... I'm saying yes. that generally when we talk about a running mate for Dr. Baumia, we say that that running mate should be a non-Muslim, should be an Akan person, preferably from the Ashanti region. You are, you are off again. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying that... Is that a rule that must be obeyed by the candidate or things will go south? Well, Omaru, I heard bits of your questions, but if you can hear me, I can proceed from where I heard. All right, take it up. Let's, let's see. Mm. Yes, so your question was in respect of whether or not the person must necessarily be an account. And uh, my earlier initial comments were 
driven by the fact that I had done some small work in rest. Apologies, I will try and go back to Prof. Uh, Sami, you can continue to tell us uh, more about Dr. Matthew Boko Prempe so we can look at it. We'll try so, and go back to Prof. So this particular interview here granted journalists in the Ashanti region, Kumasi to be precise, has angered a lot of people. People have described this comment as unfortunate, and they even say to the extent that as someone who is perceiving or being considered to be a running mate or the other, this should not be the kind of utterance you should be making in, in the midst of uh, challenges or the current challenges we are going as far as the energy sector is concerned. So his name has, has come out from day one. From day one, his name has always come up. And then we'll wait and see if the flag bearer will indeed select Dr. Matthew Boku Pempe as his running mate for the election. And then initially, or earlier, another name that also came up was Oseche Mensabo, the former majority leader in Ghana's parliament, uh, 66 years old. He was... Um, the majority leader, um, but currently still the Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, um, MP for Swami, may not contest the next election again. But because of his recent issues with the majority leader, and when he was removed, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia appointed him as the chairman of the party's manifesto committee. And so that's what he's doing now, going around across the country to take ideas from um, individuals to uh, factor them into the party's manifesto, which the party will use to prosecute the election. So his name also came up in, in the initial stages of the election. Another name that has also been there from day one is Dr. Yao Osei Edusei. He is Edu the, Educhum. Educhum, sorry. Currently the Minister of Education, a former Deputy Education Minister, and was deputy to Napo when Napo was Education Minister in the first term of the Akufado administration. Um, uh, someone who believes in education, uh, one way or the other, ran a school in, the, in, in America before, you know, uh, became the deputy minister. The president tells the story of how he met um, Dr. Educhum. He had mentioned that he went to the U.S. some time back to go and do, before the election, to go and do fundraising for the campaign. And he saw Dr. Educhum there who came to give an excellent speech about what can be done to transform Ghana's education. And after the conversation, the president, who was then candidate, Akufado, approached him and said that, I want you to come and work for me if I win the election. And he said, OK. So when President Akufado came back in 2016 and won the election, one of his first people he considered as a minister was uh, Dr. Yao Educhum. And he told this story uh, to us some, some years back when this appointment was made. And he's currently a member of parliament for the Bosonchi constituency. I told you about the story how yeah. he came, he came to parliament to mm -hmm. and to me help you. So his name has been there from day one. Just last, or uh, this week, yeah, somewhere Tuesday, they launched the One Student, One Tablet initiative, which many people believe um, is, is his idea and wants to push the education frontiers very hard through him. So his name has been there from okay. day one. Sam, Sam, so we'll take a break here. He's been pushing the STEM agenda yeah. as well. We'll take a break. This is the Situation Room on City TV. When we come back, we'll look at the other persons whose names have come up. There are new names that have come up. We'll talk about their strengths, their weaknesses. And of course, we'll try to re-establish connection to Prof and uh, have that interview. Stay with us. You're welcome back. This is Situation Room on City TV, broadcasting from number five, Ola Hansen Lane at Tessano in Accra. My name is Umaru Sandavad here with Sami Wiafi. We've been looking at the new patriotic party today. We started with the unity or disunity uh, in the party in the Ashanti region. We've dealt with that particular issue. We are looking at, or we looked at the intervention from the government party, the government and the party itself, uh, the intervention from the campaign team of Dr. Baumia and the chief of staff. Now we are looking at the possible running mate to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. He has said that he will name his running mate next month, which is April. We are looking at the persons whose names have been coming up and what these persons hold. So the first person on the list, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, MP for Michelle South, Minister for Energy, used to be Minister for Education. Of course, uh, these are very trying times for him uh, because of the issues of the power fluctuations that we are witnessing. Just today, the Electricity Company of Ghana issued a statement in which it announced that as many as 25 communities in the Greater Accra region are going to be without power. And the ECG says it is because of uh, shortfall in power supply by Gridco, the Ghana Grid Company. So all these matters uh, around the power sector is really a challenging and a troubling one. I saw a, mess, a post by Gabi Ochidaku a short while ago on Facebook where he said he's, there seems to be something wrong 
that after seven years they've had stability in the power sector, in the final hour or the 11th hour of the Kufuado government, they're having power challenges. So that's something that Matthew Poko Prempe would be remembered for. He's able to fix it, of course, then it would be good for him. And if he fails to fix it, he becomes a Dr. Kwabna Donko, uh, who had to resign um, after failing to solve Dumso in the John Mahama government. That is one person we looked at. We're also looking at uh, Dr. Yaose Duchum, his MP for Bosomchi. He was Deputy Minister of Education, being promoted to be main Minister for Education. He has been at post for some time now. He's been pushing the STEM agenda. We are told that he's also angling to be a running mate. The third person, Sami, would be who? And one name matters, you know, it goes in and out. You know, okay. he's here today, tomorrow he's out. You know, the name keeps coming up here and there. It's Dr. Brian Echampo, the current Minister of Food and Agric, a former Minister of State at the National Security uh, Ministry, a former Deputy Interior Minister, the current Member of Parliament for the BTV constituency. Now, his name, you, you consider him as someone who, who is not in front, who is also not at the back. Mm -hmm. So more or less like in the middle, so mm -hmm. because weeks pass, his name is, is coming up as a strong front runner. Another time you hear that he's not going to run again, he's not going to be selected. So we, we keep his name as someone who, who is in and out, somewhere or the other. But in the initial stages of a possible running mate for Dr. Baumia, his name came out very, very strongly as a possible candidate. But what people, you know, spoke against or kicked against his perceived nomination is that he's coming from the eastern region. The eastern region is where the president is coming from. And many people have said that, oh, then you can't select someone from the same region as the current president is also coming from because you need to give other regions the other opportunities to also, you know, uh, uh, serve on the ticket. But the counter argument is that the eastern region is also one of the strongholds of the MPP. And so if you want to satisfy people within the region, you must get somebody from that particular region to also be on the ticket. So Dr. Brian Chambon's name is in and out. He goes in and then he comes out later on. So he's, he's given, been given a job as Minister for Agri um, yes. uh, to replace Dr. Afri Akoto, who went to run for the flag yes. bearership of the party. He's pushing the planting for food and jobs, yeah. chapter two. And he says it's going to be enough food. He's working on that mm -hmm. from the eastern region. Very influential, very powerful in the House of Parliament and also in the executive. All right, so we have an eye on him. Um, so, Sana, th these are the three individuals who um, formally or initial stages had their names as the favorite to partner Dr. Baumia. No, and then, some few months now, we've had a new crop of individuals who have also showed up or their names have been making rounds in the corridor of power as possible running mates to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. And a few of them are women. That has been influenced by John Dramani Mahamas selection of a woman as a running mate. Now, proponents of those who are pushing for a woman or a lady or a female to be Dr. Baumia's running mate is that in the, if they want to break the NDC agenda of whereby getting more votes from the women mm -hmm. or the female populace of this country, let's get a, a woman or a lady as a running mate to Dr. Baumia. So more or less, there is a split, 50-50. Mm -hmm. You get part of the women, and then the NDC gets part, and then the MPP also gets part of the women. So there's a strong push for the, the current chief of staff, uh, Madame Freema Oseo Pare, to be nominated as a running mate to Dr. Mama de Baumia. Now, the argument is that she's seen it before. She's seen everything when it comes to governance. Under former President Kufuwa, she was a deputy minister of manpower and employment. She was a member of parliament for the ARSO West Wagon constituency. She served very well for Nanel Kufuwa. I remember in 2012, before the 2000. A six election, she served in the office of Daniel Kufado as one of her political aides, his political aides, um, at that particular office at the Ridge behind the GIG. Almost every time you go there, you'll find Madame Freeman there. So it wasn't surprising to a lot of people when Daniel Kufado appointed as the chief of staff when he won power after the 2016 election. Now, the argument is that she's a woman. You know how Ghanaians perceive women one way or the other. She is a mother to everyone, appointing her or nominating her as a running mate will be a, a, a good choice for the MPP, and she will the Ashanti region as well. So if the MPP is looking for anybody from the Ashanti region, Madame Fremont Pari will be the ideal candidate for the MPP. And if they want to more or less meet John Mama in the NDC boot for boot, as far as the selection of a female as a running mate, then she's the best person. So the thing that will go the against the MPP in this one is her age, 1976. Yes. She was teaching in 1976 mm -hmm. at the university. At the university of Ghana. Now, we do know the controversy around Jen Mensah, uh, Nana Opukwa <laughs> appointment. Yeah. 
where her age came up mm -hmm. in Parliament and uh, Alexander Afenyo marking all those issues. If she's old, then what happens to Freeman? She's older. It's the same she? argument then. Yeah, so she's older. So that's something that should be considered. Yeah. Again, the campaigns are very rigorous. I mean, you very, have been following genius. campaigns. And this goes for both Prof. <laughs> Jane and uh, Freeman. Yeah. I mean, if you chose them, how active can they be? Because in 2016, we saw that Baumia and his wife were more active on yeah. the ground than Nana Kufado and his mm -hmm. wife. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have a reversal of the case <laughs> where the flag bearer is working harder than the running mate? Yeah. We saw John Mahama working even harder than Atta Mills. Yes. Mills was not that strong. Mm -hmm. Mahama was leading a very, a very serious campaign yeah. at the time. You're going to have a running mate who will not be strong enough to push the campaign. I don't know how it's going to be like. I mean, she's old, and mm -hmm. I'm using her age to, to, to say that, because Akufado became president at age 72. Yeah. Now he's 80. You are going to be... Maybe 80 tomorrow. Maybe 80 yeah. tomorrow. This one is 76. <laughs> we saw how inactive Akufado was in his, la I mean, in, in his last days. Look at Joe Biden, the, the mm -hmm. age of Joe Biden. Again, when you are looking for running mates, you want someone who may succeed you. It's yeah. not automatic. Yeah. Because Ali Muhammad did not succeed Kufour. But most likely, you want someone who will succeed you. So the issue of both Prof. Nana, Jinopoku Ajiman, and uh, Prima would be succession. Yeah. The issue of Prof., you may parry it away and say, John Muhammad has one term, and that if he wins, and he wins with Prof. Jane, they spend just four years. Jane may decide that I'm not mm -hmm. going to be flag bearer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can both go home and sleep. But Baumia has a two-term two yeah. mandate. Yeah. So if Baumia wins 2025, he's going to be president mm -hmm. to 2028. He'll go for re-election. Would he change his running mate midstream? These are things that we should just look and, at. And, and if that happens, then she'll be 80 years at that time. She'll be 80. Will she be in a better position to campaign and partner so, Dr. Baumia again? Tole. The odds may be against her. Eba as as Eba Tole. But what's her ethnicity? She's Akan. She's Akan. She's from Ashanti. But from Greater Accra. But MP in, a, in yeah. Greater Accra. Yes, I also West Wagon. Okay. Formerly member of parliament for that I see. constituency. I see. All right. Another new name that has also popped up is Irina Toshi. Hey, She's from, the administrator of the Common Fund. A very popular figure within the MPP politics in the Greater Accra region. In the Greater Accra region, um, the regional executives call her Mummy. That's the name they call her because of her philanthropic activities towards the party in the region. She's a go-to person when it comes to, you know, anything has to do with financing with the MPP in the Greater Accra region. And people are pushing for her to be a possible running mate for Dr. Baum, yeah? Because one, she's a guy, she's from the Greater Accra region, and there's a perception or they believe that if any party wins Greater Accra region, you, you win, win the national election. Yeah. So if you want to win the national election, go for someone from the Greater Accra region, and then you get her on the field. She's also known to be a, 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 what word will I use? A very popular Christian, for want of a better okay. way. Okay. Because I'm reliably informed that every year, she sends close to 50 pastors to the Israeli pilgrimage. To Jerusalem. Yeah, to Jerusalem, as they do every year. It's been a constant feature for her. I see. And so I even know pastors in my church who have benefited from such activity. And so wow. within the Christian circle, the Christians all believe that because of what she does for, for the Christian community and the Christian dom, it will be just wise and proper to push her to go through. And Baumia needs a Christian vote. And she, yes, definitely. So she's that. younger. She's young, 54 years old. You know, has the energy to campaign. She's been a member of parliament before in the Tema West constituency. I remember her, her, her primaries with Carlos Ahinkra. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. a deadly primary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember it like yesterday. It was a very tedious one, but then Carlos managed to win. She's been in leadership of parliament before. She was a deputy whip. Um, those times in parliament has been a deputy ambassador to, to the U.S. before during the, the John Kufo administration. So she's seen it all mm. internationally, and locally, gun. and she's a guy. And a very popular among both MPP and NDC MPs. I Remember see. recently when she had an issue with Dambochi about mm -hmm. the common fund? Mm -hmm. You can tell the number of members of parliament who rallied behind her against Dambochi, and this matter was resolved by the, by, by the president. And so within the, the circles of the politics of the MPP in the greater Accra region, they are pushing for her, and she's a very popular figure. So I mean, let, me say, let me try and go back to Professor Smart Sapon. He is a lecturer at the Kumasi Technical University. Prof, can you hear me this time around? I can hear you well Great. and clear. So you did some work on running mates. What are the key things that stood up that we should share with our audience? Well, <clears throat> a very insightful conversation already done. What I can add is that 
the call for an account, for example, would be to balance the ticket that has gone to the north for the flag bearer. Pre uh, specifically, not just any account, but the inclusion of, of an account that will maximize the vote of the NPP. And that is why many are narrowing it down to the Asante region. If you see the names that have come up also, they reflect the call of the general uh, membership of the party. The list that you called, I think it is only Madame Irene Natasi who comes from the Greater Accra region. The remaining are all Akans and Asantis. What is happening is that the Asante region needs to come into this battle strongly. Over the period, the votes have been going down, and the last time we recorded, I think, about 71%. If the NTP can break the eight, this 71% would have to go up to minimum about 75%. And so the party, I'm sure, is aware of the concentration of efforts that must come to the region, and I'm sure it is what is informing the uh, Asante, Asante ticket to partner Dr. Mahmoud Zahumia. That aside, you realize that the popularity of the names of the people that we have varies from one point to the other. For example, if you talk about Madame Marina, she's so known, but perhaps largely in the Greater Accra region, whilst the rest of them uh, talk about Nafu Edition because of their ministerial positions, Madame Fremo Pare, because she being the chief of staff. He would have interacted with the rank and file across the country. I'm sure that is what is informing the popularity. If you should rank, you would perhaps put her somewhere uh, near to the bottom, as against those who would lead. But let me put it on record, and it's been so in the past, that it is not the case that the names that appear most popular is the one that becomes likely a uh, 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 candidate. And uh, some of you can bear me out, some I mean, of your good self you can bear me out. Over the period, some of the most popular names did not end up becoming the running names to the flag bearers. You can talk about Madame Professor Jane Nupokwa Jima when he was coming. He was the least to have been mentioned. Other popular names were going around. Before Ali Muhammad was selected by President Kufuor, you remember the names that were featuring. Uh, the Kumbo days, uh, yeah, there were stronger names and stronger uh, party people whose names featured prominently. But at the end of the day, it took President Kufour, it took even President Mills to select President Mahama, uh, President Rawlings to select President Mills uh, as against the Ahoys and those names that were very prominent around that time. And we can see President Anad Dankwe Kufuadu also selecting Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as against the names that were more prominent around that time. So uh, let us be very cautious in, in, in I'm, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the, the expected, the as, as, aspiring running mates. Uh, I'm sure they would want to manage their expectations very well so that their selection or not will not deepen the apparent crisis that uh, uh, appears to exist within the NPP. They need to unite uh, going forward. And so the expectation should be a little lowered. Let them not hype it so much to, be, to appear disappointed if the name is called and it is outside all these popular names. Let's look at the key themes of a possible running mate. Is religion very crucial, you think? Yeah, our country is, though secular by definition, uh, dominated by at least the two religions that we know. Christian religion, as you know, is in excess of 70%. And then Islamic religion is about 16.9%. And the rest is for the other related religions. So when we are aware of this breakdown, then we would agree that religion of the running mate or the leader would count, especially the two dominating ones, so that if you have a a flag bearer from the Islamic faith, it becomes very, very necessary. You do not have any alternatives. Comparatively, you need to get a Christian to balance out that ticket. So, uh, I mean, not to spread or preach religious sectionism, but I mean, under this 
discussion, I think religion is very key. So for a flag bearer being a Muslim, I think the running mate must be a Christian. I know you are going to ask, I know you are going to ask about why then Professor Jean is a Christian and uh, President Mahama is also a Christian. I mean, that is not to say it's a strict rule, but I think it, it will balance out for the MPP if the flag bearer is from the minority religious group and they get the running mate from the majority uh, uh, religious group. So, yes, my answer would be yes in this particular con con uh, contest. So religion is tied to ethnicity, so I don't even have to ask about ethnicity. Let me ask about the gender card. How crucial is it going to be? And must the MPP neutralize the NDC's woman running mate thing, or they can chart their own path and decide that it can be a male male and things will go for it? Because the question would be, if, <clears throat> if people always wanted a woman on the candidate and that they would vote for a woman, in 20, 2016, when there was no woman, how did people vote? That's a question that may be considered, but proceed. Yes. Omar, uh, there's a thing difference or thing line between gender, the concept of gender and womanhood or woman. So, yes, you know when you started a question, you mentioned gender, but at the end you narrowed it down to woman. Gender sometimes goes beyond the sex or the person being a man or, the, or a woman. You can be a man that promotes the welfare of women and there you can be genderly neutral. So, so all I'm saying is that the concept of gender, so when you go to the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection, they will tell you that they carefully use the word gender so that it can accommodate both men and women. Uh, it used to be Ministry of Women and Children, whatever, and I think it was modified to Ministry of Gender and Social Protection so that the gender can make space for women or men that would need the reverse or otherwise support. So, so gender, gender, gender is, is a mindset. Woman is what it is. Absolutely. Now, so should, should Baumia choose a woman or not? What's your view? Anyway, I don't think he should be limited to the, the sex or the, 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 the person being a woman or not. Even though I am a very good advocate for women, I do not think that, uh, I mean, the gender. You know, elections is about numbers tomorrow. So he should carefully look for somebody who can help him maximize the numbers, especially for election 2024, where you know very well that hmm. it's going to be the most difficult very one. Well. So yes, if the sex or gender, the person being a woman, can still add on to your vote, okay. you have to let the numbers guide well. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Smart Sapon. Uh, he is a lecturer with the... Uh, uh, Kumasi Technical University, giving us his own perspective there. Sami, we have one more candidate, yeah. uh, one more possible running mate uh, in, in, in the mix of things. So another name that has also, you know, come up is Kojo Pokun Safwa. He was one of the candidates who was vying to lead the MPP as a possible presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Little much is not about him. Or yes, so yeah, he's an energy analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Dr. Baumia campaign, he's the spokesperson or the chairman of the energy committee of the party. The very first time people heard about him was when, you know, issues of doom so in the Mahama area when he was speaking mm -hmm. about it. But aside that, he's not held any party position before. He only came to prominence when he decided to contest as a presidential candidate when the party opened nomination for presidential aspirants. So he is also coming up as a possible running mate. So these are the people that Dr. Bamia uh, is looking out for. The, the, there's one person who was in the mix. Uh, unfortunately, he's passed. The uh, John Kuma. Dr. John Kuma. And today is the first the one, week, yeah. one week anniversary. Yeah. No, now. not anniversary, what am I saying? One week one celebration. Week observation observation. After observation. Passing. And so um, the vice president, a number of uh, government yeah. appointees are, are in a jisu in his home uh, where they have settled that the funeral will be on May 18th. And so I think it's only fair that we say we, we wish uh, the family more strength and also. Um, we pray that uh, John Kuma Apuntia, a very good friend of ours, I first encountered him somewhere in 2012 where he led the uh, uh, young patriots to do a demonstration. <laughs> and I remember when I came back to report on Eyewitness News with Shamima, I was telling Shamima they were less than a thousand. <laughs> and he called and he was angry and it was a whole debate over how many people they managed to put on the streets. But may he rest well, that's what we can say. And that's how we end today's edition 
of the Situation Room on City TV. My name is Umar Rusanda Amado. I did this with Sami Weafi. We'll be back next week. Uh, stay with us here at City TV. It's your world. Thank you.